Hello friends, welcome to PL SQL Performance Tuning video series. This video is a continuation of previous set of videos where we are seeing about the bulk collection related concept. In part 1 of the video, we have seen about what is bulk binding and how bulk binding improves the performance of PL SQL code and what are the types of bulk binding. In part 2 of the video, we have seen about the types of bulk binding in detail like what is in binding, what is out binding and what is defined category. In part 3 of the video, we have seen in detail about what is defined category and how to use the bulk collect keyword to transfer the content of a select statement output into a collection variable or from a cursor into a collection variable. So basically the defined category or you can say the bulk collect keyword will help us to transfer the content of a table into a collection. So as a continuation of that, in this video we are going to see about the in binding category. So the in binding is just a reverse of the defined category. The defined category will help us to load the information from a table into a collection variable whereas the in binding will transfer the content from a collection variable into a table. That is we are going to read all the information from the collection and then we are just going to insert into a table. To do this we have a keyword called for all keyword. So in this video we are going to see about the for all keyword syntax and its usage and the advantages and limitations of for all and the performance improvement this for all brings in compared to the for statement. Let us start with the for all keyword. So here is the snippet from Oracle documentation. The for all statement executes one DML statement for all the values in the collection provided. In simple terms, the for all keyword executes the DML statement for each and every row present in the collection without switching between the SQL and PL SQL engine. That is why it improves the performance. We will understand better with an example later. First let us look into the syntax of the for all keyword. So here is the syntax of for all keyword. It starts with for all followed by an index variable then in is a keyword here followed by the bounds class is nothing but the collection information we are going to pass followed by one DML statement. So this DML statement is just going to execute once for all the values provided in the collection. Optionally we can give few keywords like save exceptions and there are few other keywords like indices of values of. Probably all these additional or optional keywords we will see in a separate video. So in this video we will understand how to use the for all. Let us start with an example to understand it better. So here is a very simple example. So what I have did is I have just declared one nested table variable called NV employee list which is of type employee row type. That means this variable can hold the multiple records of employee table. Next what I am doing using bulk collect keyword I am transferring all the information from employee table into this collection variable into this nested table variable. So right now this LV EMP list variable contains all the rows of the or all the informations available in the employee table. Let us assume that we are just doing some manipulation in this variable. After doing all the manipulation our expectation is we want to insert all the information from this collection variable into another table called EMP underscore backup. So this is the expectation. How to implement this? So let me just reiterate. We just want to read and insert the information into an employee backup table from the collection. So the easiest implementation is we can just iterate through the collection, read row by row and then insert into the table. For that we can use the for loop. First let us try to implement this scenario using a for loop. Then we will understand what is the problem with this implementation. Then we will see how to implement the same. Uh, logic using a for all keyword. Then we'll try to understand what is the performance difference the for all brings in compared to the for keyword. Let us start with the for implementation. So here is the employee table output. So I just created one more table called employee underscore backup. So it's exactly the structure is exactly same like employee table. So now what we are going to do we are just going to read the content from the collection variable and then we are just going to insert into the employee backup table. So for that what I am just going to do, I am just going to use the for loop. Let's say for i in the collection variable dot first to the collection variable dot last loop 
So let's put end loop. So I'm just going to insert into employee backup table values of this row type value. So let me just execute this statement or execute this block. So right now, if you see, there is no records available in the employee table. So let us just execute this PLSQL block. Now the block is executed successfully. Let us check whether the employee backup table is loaded or not. Yes. Now, whatever the information available in this collection is now inserted into this employee backup table. Okay. So this is the block we have written. So basically what we have done is all the information, whatever is available in this collection, we just iterated one by one. So within the loop, we are just using the insert statement to insert into the backup table. Let us understand how this code get executed. So here is the block. In fact, this block structure I have explained in the part one of the video uh, saying that how bulk collect will improve the performance. So whenever there is a PLSQL code, the PLSQL engine will execute. And whenever the PLSQL encounters an SQL statement, the SQL statement will be sent to the SQL engine. So what will happen is the for loop will be executed by the PLSQL engine. And whenever it encounters an insert statement, the insert statement will be sent to SQL engine. Once the insert is done, it will just, the control will come back to PLSQL engine. For the next iteration, again, it will send the insert statement to SQL engine. Once the insertion is completed, again, the control will come back to PLSQL engine. Suppose if the for loop is going for 100 times means, what will happen is 100 times the control will come to from PLSQL engine to SQL and from SQL back to PLSQL engine. And this is called the context switching, which will cause the performance degradation. To improve this context switching or to reduce the context switching, instead of for, we can use the for all keyword. So the for all keyword will do the same operation without a context switch between SQL engine and PLSQL engine. Fine. So now let us re-implement the same logic using the for all keyword. Okay, now what we are going to do, instead of using the for, we are just going to use the for all keyword. So let me just comment the for statement. So let me just comment this. Let me roll back. Let us check. Right now there is no records available in the employee backup table. So instead of for, now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use the for all keyword. Okay, one key thing is that the for all keyword should not have the loop and end loop and the for all should be followed by one single DML statement only. No other statements are allowed. We will not be able to put any other conditional statement, nothing. For all should be followed by one single statement. That's it. Okay, so here is the for all statement. Let us now re-execute the block because anyway we have commented the for section. I just included the for all block here. Let me just re-execute it. Right now the employee backup table is empty. So I'm just re-executing it. Block got executed successfully. Let us check the employee backup table. Now you can see all the informations are loaded into the employee backup table. Fine. In fact, this is the block structure we have just now written. So instead of for loop, now we are using the for all. So the advantage of using for all is that uh, the context switch between the SQL and PLSQL engine would have reduced, thereby it improves the performance. First, now let us see the advantage and limitation of for all. Then I will show you the performance difference this for all brings in. Okay, so in this slide, I'm just going to give you the key advantage and limitations. There are few other li limitations that I didn't mention here. Probably we will see about the for all versus for in a separate video. Okay, let's start with the advantages. So obviously the for all will reduce the context switch between the SQL and PLSQL engine and improves the performance of insert statement. So it helps us to effectively transfer the data from a collection into a table. So let us see the key limitations of for all. See the very first limitation is the for all must be followed by only one single DML statement. No other DML statements are allowed. So we will not be able to use any other conditional statements or any other statements. And you will not be able to refer the collection values row by row. You will be able to use the collection as a whole, but not the individual rows of the collection. So these are the key limitations of the for all statement. Now let us see the performance improvement this for all keyword brings in. 
For that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to transfer a huge amount of data from a collection into a table using both the methods. First, let me show you by implementing the for method. Then let us measure the time taken. Then let us redo the same implementation using for all and then we'll measure the time taken. Then we can compare the time taken between the for versus for all. So first let us implement using the for method. So for that what I'm just going to do is, so I have actually two table. One table is called employee one and another table is called employee two. Okay, in employee one table, I have around six lakh record. Let me just show you the count. I have around like 6.8 lakhs of employee. So right now the employee two table is empty. So what we are going to do is we are just going to transfer the information from employee one into a collection and from collection back into the employee ta two table using the for loop. And then we are just going to compute the time taken and the same implementation we are just going to do using the for all. And then we are just going to compute the time taken. First, let us do using the for. So let me just read from employee one table and I'm just going to insert into employee two table. So to capture the time, I just want to capture the start time and end time. For that, I'm declaring two variable. Let me say, let, let me say LV start time is number. Same way, let me say LV end time is number. So the start time I'm capturing just before the for loop. For that, I'm just using the DBMS utility dot get underscore time equal to yeah so the same way i am just capturing the end time into another variable called lv end time now i am just going to print the difference between the end time and start time so let me put dbms output dot put underscore line so let's put end time minus start time so let me give a meaningful detail like time taken by for loop equal to okay so let me put set server output on okay so let me just check right now there are like 6.8 lakhs of records in employee one table and employee two table is empty so let us just execute this block so what this block is going to do is it is just going to read all the 6.8 lakh record into the collection variable and the for loop is going to iterate one by one and it is going to insert into the employee two table so what happens here is that this insert statement is going to get executed 6.8 lakh times that is why it is taking this much time let us see the amount of time taken by this block. Then we'll redo the same thing for the for all statement. Still executing. So let's see how much time this is actually taking. Okay, now it's completed. It has actually taken 45 seconds. Okay, so let me just copy the same thing. Let me put it into another uh, window. Let us just modify the same thing for for all here. So let me just roll back it. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to instead of for loop, I'm just going to use the for all. So let me just remove the loop keyword and the end loop. So here, let's say time taken by for all. Okay, the same thing. Right. So let me select the count. So in employee, we have like 6.8 lakh record. Employee two is empty. So let me just re-execute the same thing by using the for all keyword. So actually the for keyword has taken more than like 30 seconds. That is in this case, it is like more than like 45 seconds. Now, if you see the for all keyword has completed, it has taken like six seconds to complete. So as we have seen the time taken by for loop is much higher than the for all statement. You can say that it is like 10 times more than the for all statement. Okay. Okay. There are few other keywords like limit, save exception, values of and indices of. Normally we will be using as part of the bulk collections. 
probably about all these things we'll see in the subsequent set of videos to understand the concept about the uh, bulk collections it is very much important to understand the concept about the collections so i would suggest you to go through these eight videos which will give you the basic informations needed to understand about the collections so that you will be able to understand the bulk collection concepts better if you have learned something new please like this video subscribe and stay tuned for new feature video interview question sql practical question concept videos and performance tuning videos if you want any questions to be answered you can post it in the comment section or you can drop to this mail id and thanks a lot for watching this video